Welcome to our last day of Zany Scientist Week. Can you believe it's our last day? We've had so many days filled with art and science making, and if you've missed any of them, just know that you can go back and catch all of them on my YouTube channel. Today, I'm really excited because we're combining the science and the art. We're not doing two separate projects, but one because we will be making our very own clay. So before we get started, let's go ahead and go through our catchphrase. Are you ready? I make messes. I make mistakes. But deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. Awesome, guys. Big shout out to our sponsors. Thank you, Dixon Ticonderoga, for making Zany Scientist Week, helping to make it possible by providing us with, or me, with the supplies that I've been using. Today, let's speak about the supplies you're not going to need very much. First thing, you'll need a cookie sheet or a tray, something with a little bit of a lip to it that will help kind of contain the mess. Then you'll need a bowl. I'm using a pretty big bowl to mix up my own clay. Here are some other things you're going to need. You will need salt. I've got a container of salt right here. You will only need one quarter cup of salt. You will need a quarter cup of water. So I've got my measuring cup. I've already dumped my water into my bowl so that I could have an empty measuring cup for continuing to measure the rest of my supplies. The other thing you're going to need is a half a cup, a half a cup of flour. I've also got a little spatula so I could mix everything up with. Then that's the supplies I'll be using to kind of mix up my clay. When my clay is finished, I'm going to need some sort of surface to work with my clay on. If you work with your clay directly on the table, it could stick. So if you have a placemat or even a piece of cardboard, an old cereal box, a newspaper, something to cover and protect your table and keep your clay from sticking, that would be great. Also, you might want something to kind of cut into your clay with. When we cut it in half or cut it into smaller pieces, for me, I'm using a little plastic knife. You could use what's called a skewer, which is a, a little wooden contraption. It looks a lot like a pencil. You could even use a pencil. So think of something that's safe, that you have permission to use, and grab that. All right, guys, we are going to have so much fun combining our science and art today. But before we get rolling, let's go ahead and get our pinkies out. Are you ready? <clears throat> I pinky promise that no matter what, I will try my best. I will try to stick with the recipe, follow it, and keep on going, even if it doesn't quite turn out. I can always try it again. Now, most of you guys know I'm kind of not really the best at sticking with recipes. Some of you guys might have seen that I was on a Netflix show called Nailed It, where the judges, they all spit out my food. But you know what? After that happened, I was really embarrassed, as you can imagine, but I learned from the first round. I learned from my mistakes. So when the second round came along, I was much better prepared. Do you know the first thing I did? The first thing I did was I asked for help and I got help from an expert and I was able to make something that the judges not only didn't spit out, but they actually liked. So that just goes to show sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, you just gotta keep trying. So that's why our word for the day is perseverance. Whoop, whoop. If I say perseverance, whoop, whoop. You say perseverance, whoop, whoop. You already know what to do. Perseverance means that no matter what, you just keep trying. So that's why perseverance, whoop, whoop, is our word for the day. All right, let's get started, guys. Friends, today we're actually going to be using a recipe and making a project for my clay book. This clay book that I wrote a couple of years ago 
has all sorts of clay projects in it, but it's the kind of clay that doesn't have to be fired in a kiln. So most of us don't have a kiln, which is a special oven for baking or firing. It's called firing because it gets as hot as a fire. We don't have those in our homes. But all the clays in this book are either clays that you can buy at the store that don't have to be fired in a kiln or clays that you can make. So the recipe we're using today can actually be found in this book as well as the project we're doing. All right, so I just thought I would share that with you before we get started. I've got my cookie sheet and I've got a little extra water from when I'm working with clay. I went ahead and I poured one fourth one fourth of a cup of water into my big bowl. Now I'm going to pour another quarter of a cup, one fourth of a cup. This time I'm using salt. So I'm gonna put my cup on a flat surface. I don't ever wanna hold it when I'm trying to pour salt in because that'll alter or change my measuring. So I'm gonna put this on a flat surface like a table Shake that salt into the container. And I'm going for one quarter or one fourth of a cup. Those two words mean the same thing. I'm gonna shake it a little bit, lean down so I can see it looks like I'm almost there. There we go, that should do the trick. Okay, I've got one quarter of a cup. Pour that in with my quarter cup of water. And now I'm going to use flour. For my flour, I need half of a cup. That's double of what I just used. Oh, I see that some of my salt is still in there. So I'm gonna get some of that out from the bottom. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going for half of a cup. That is double what I used of salt. So I'm gonna put that amount in my measuring cup shake it out. It's interesting how the two uh, materials, salt and flour, they have two totally different kinds of texture. Salt is very grainy. It almost feels like sand. Flour is very soft and fluffy. Oh, I keep accidentally pouring too much in, which is why I'm putting some more back. There we go. That looks like it's pretty good. That looks like a half of a cup. I'm just going to make sure. Yep. All right. Now I'm going to add this in. Now that I've got all three ingredients, I have a quarter cup of water, a quarter cup of salt, a half a cup of flour. I'm now ready to mix. So I'm going to use my little spatula and my goal is to make it so that the three ingredients all blend together. But you'll notice as you're starting to mix they're a little clumpy, a little bit clumpy. So at some point, you're going to need to use your hands to knead the dough. That means you're going to be squishing the three ingredients together with your hands. It's spelled knead, K-N-E-A-D. That's different than when you need something like, I need me a piece of pizza. That's an E. E D. Who words that sound exactly the same spell different and mean who totally different things? Look at that. That looks pretty good. Now, if your dough does not look like mine, if it's too watery and too runny, try adding a little bit more flour in, a little bit at a time. If it's too dry, then maybe you just need to knead it a little bit or perhaps you need to add more water, but only add a little bit at a time. All right, I've got it out of my dish now. I'm going to knead it. That means I'm just kind of squishing it together in my hands. My hands are helping to continue to mix the ingredients together. Now, if yours is uh, it's a little sticky, try doing this. Try adding just a little bit of flour to your hands and that will help make it not stick so much to you. There we go, that's a little bit better. All right, so now that I have my dough made, I can create with it. But if ever you're done creating with it and, or maybe you just are finished and you wanna roll it back up and save it for later, you can always put it in a Ziploc bag and keep it in the fridge 
but you might want to write on your bag what it is so that nobody tries to eat this. This would be the worst tasting cookie ever. All right, now let's talk about creating with our salt dough clay. Now notice while I'm working, I'm not working directly on my table because this clay can be a little bit sticky. And I don't want this to stick to my table, so what I'm going to do is just have like a little, little file folder is what I'm using as my work surface, but you could have a cereal box, a piece of cardboard, anything that you're not worried about it getting a little bit damaged or clay stuck to that will help protect your table. All right, now that I've got my piece of clay, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just roll it into a ball or a sphere. So I'm gonna roll this up. There we go. And now I'm going to turn it into what's called a slab. A slab is a smushed piece of clay. So I can make a slab two ways. I can do it with my hands like that, or I can lay it on my paper. Now, my clay is a little sticky, so I've still got my flour on hand. I'm gonna put a little flour on my mat here so it doesn't stick to my mat. Press it down this way, there we go. When you're working with this kind of clay, your clay should always be about as thick as a cookie. So I'm kind of squishing my clay down. I'm creating a slab. A slab is a smushed piece of clay. And I'm also making sure as I smush it down that it's not getting too thin. It's about as thick as a nice cookie. Okay, now that I have my flattened sphere, I've flattened it into a slab, I'm going to take my cutting tool, I'm using a skewer, you could use a little plastic knife, you could even use a pencil or the back of a paintbrush, use whatever you've got, and I'm going to cut my clay in half. We've been talking about measurements a lot. Oh, it's a little tricky to do because the clay likes to pull, so notice I'm going at a kind of a slow speed. There we go. Whoop. Oh, it took some of my clay off and that's okay. All right, now I have two pieces of clay. I've cut my clay in half. I'm gonna set one piece aside and today I'm going to make a little bird with my clay. So now that I've got this cut in half, I think what I'll do is maybe I can even flip it over. Ooh, it's nice and flowery on this side. It's a little smoother too. So I think I'll flip it over to the smooth side. Now I'm gonna use my extra clay as bits and pieces for my clay bird. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take some little pieces of clay. Here's the cool thing about clay. You can make anything out of clay as long as you can roll a sphere, as long as you can smoosh that sphere into a slab, and as long as you can make something called a coil, which I'll show you how to do in just a moment. But first, let's make our bird's eyes. So I've got one eye. I think I'll set it right here for now. I'm not really sure if that's exactly where I want it to go. Roll another sphere. Squish this into a slab. I think I might even overlap. That might be kind of funny. Overlap the two circles. But again, I'm just setting it on there to see how it looks. If I wanted to make little smaller pupils inside, I could take smaller pieces of clay and add it like this, boop, and add it like that, boop. Okay, that's looking pretty good. But now what I think I need to make are, is the beak. So remember I said you can make anything out of a sphere, a slab, or a coil. A coil is when you roll clay up and down your hands. I could turn that into a little beak. Look at that. Okay, so to get it to stay though, I'm going to add, now that I like it, a little bit of water. Massage a little bit of water onto my clay and you'll notice that right away it's really sticky. That's our glue. Maybe I could give it a little polka dot right there to help it stick. There we go. And now I'll add a little bit of sticky water right there. Oh, look at that, my bird looks pretty good. Okay, now I think what I'm going to add is maybe a wing. So what I'm going to do is take some of my extra clay. I think I'll just go ahead and take all of it. 
roll it into a ball or a sphere, squish it into a slab, and now I'm going to take my stick, and I think this way might be easier. Instead of trying to drag your stick through, why don't you just press your stick down? There, oh, that was so much easier. Okay, now this can be for the little bird's wing. All right, so maybe I will use my stick to add some texture to show that that those lines are the feathers. And now I'm gonna take my finger, add some water here, and add that little bird wing. Awesome, now I feel like the only thing that might be missing are maybe some little feet. I don't wanna have the feet really dangling or hanging off because when the clay dries, ooh, they could break. So what I think I'll do is I'll make it look like he's flying. I'll roll some more coils. Maybe I'll make a coil like this. Pinch it, let's see, that might look pretty good for some feet. Or maybe I could make them a little longer. The thing about working with clay is you can kind of experiment and see what works, what you like. And then when you find it, when you figure out what it is that you like about your bird, you can go ahead and glue it down. You know what I think? I think I'd like my bird just the way that it is. But it's very sticky, it's very wet. How in the world am I going to get this to dry? Well, the best thing to do if it's a nice sunny day is take it outside and let it sit in the sunshine. That will help for the water to start to evaporate and then your clay will start to dry. If it doesn't dry quickly enough or if it's still really wet, mom or dad can put it in the oven on a very, very low setting, like 150 degrees, to just kind of help the moisture of the water evaporate. Once it's dry, it'll be very fragile, meaning if you're not careful, it could break. But once it's dry, you could paint it. And you could also put a hole here and a hole there and have it be a little wall hanging. Maybe with your extra clay, you could make another bird or maybe a little egg for your bird. So think about what else you could make. I'm gonna go ahead and go over those steps. Let's see, it was a circle. I cut it in half. I could add my eyes. Oh, it'll be, this is the cutest little bird. Boop. Big eyes. Maybe a beak. Boop. There we go. And this could be the, the wing. Easy peasy. I hope you guys had so much fun making your own clay and a sculpture from your clay. The possibilities of what you can make are endless. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today, making your very own clay. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to wash my hands. If you missed any of the videos, again, you can still find them right here on my YouTube channel. And also, pretty soon, all the videos for next week's theme will be found right here. So you might want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way that you can stay up to date with all the videos and give it a big old thumbs up. That'll help other people find these videos too. Thanks, guys.